Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Three Tail. Three Tail is brought to you by Bordaria. It's for three players, ages 14 and up, and games generally run about 120 minutes. One night, I dreamt a dream of possible futures, so bleak and real, so torn at the seam. I woke, drenched in cold sweat, in fear that this might be what shall bequeath. Every alternative hereafter has been harsher than the last, and I had but one thought. This monstrosity must be stopped. Three Tail is a cooperative adventure game inspired by Thracian culture and fairy tales. So you take the role of three fairy tale heroes, each with their unique asymmetric talents. As a team, you go through three phases, the past, the present, and the future. In order to complete the final quest, in the past phase, you build the map of the land. No two maps will be the same because you'll be drawing tiles at random to build a different world every time you play. Seven unique quests hold the possible future scenarios that heroes will face. The players draw three prophecy cards at the beginning of the game that warn them about what tribulations are about to come. To be able to achieve their future goal, the heroes will have to return to the past to build up their strength. When the past phase is over, your quest is revealed in the present, showing which prophecy has been fulfilled. Then the future comes knocking on the door. Now, before we jump in and take a look at any specifics of gameplay, let's look at characters. First and foremost, these character boards are fantastic. Recess boards, the cubes stay in place. On the back is a nice bio for your character, giving you that good flavor of who you're playing. But the stats, let's take a look at virtues first. Now, virtues can be used as health in a way. You have spirit at the top of your board. And when you go into battle and you take damage, you can choose to reduce your virtues instead of losing spirit. Now, if you lose all your spirit and your character dies, then everyone loses the game. You all win or lose together. So keep that in mind. But virtues are very important, allow you to do many things. First, we have love. Love is all about how many dice you can roll in the game. So based on your level, determine the type of dice and how many you can roll, so and so forth. And then we have hope. Hope is all about changing dice, giving a positive or negative value. And this is a tiered kind of leveling. So if you're in a three to six area, and you can see these areas are shaded, you can manipulate or change one dice. And if you're in the seven to 10, you can change up to two dice and so forth. So a lot of these virtues work that way as you level up. And then we have faith. Faith is all about getting bonus cards. You can draw bonus cards and bonus cards are gonna give you things like more actions or give you faster speed and movement, things like that. And then moving to the other side of the board, we have Endeavor. Endeavor is all about getting extra actions. So you get one by default, but if you have a level of three to six, you get an additional action. And again, seven to 10, you get two additional actions, things like that. But then we have Endurance and Mercy. Endurance is going to allow you to manipulate one of your virtues, leveling it up, or Mercy will allow you to manipulate a fellow player's virtues, giving them help, much needed help throughout the game. So it is very cooperative, you are trying to aid each other, and Mercy does come into play quite often. And at the bottom of the board is your speed, basically your movement. Now, here for the video I put a white cube into speed, just so you can see it a little bit better, but speed is denoted by a black cube always. So. Cubes are very important because when you're out in the world, you're gonna be collecting those cubes, getting white ones to upgrade your virtues, getting black ones to upgrade your speed. And then finally, we have red cubes, which is your talents, the middle of your board. You can be working on three different talents at any one time. Uh, you know, you have to choose basically what you're doing here. But these red cubes, you're gonna be gathering and building up your levels so you can get these special talents to aid you, especially in the future. You really are trying to build up your character in this game in the past to deal with the future. So, like I said in the intro, the prophecy phase starts the game off, where you're drawing three cards. You get a glimpse into what the future might hold. And then you move to the past. The past is where you're going to be developing your characters and getting them ready for what lies in the future. Now the thing here is that this feels like a bit of the heart of the game because you really are moving around the map and you're gonna be drawing a tile at the start of your turn and then populating it with the appropriate bits. Again, you have white cubes that are gonna raise your virtues, you have black that are going to give you more speed, and you have the red ones for talents. And then there's some other tokens here as well. There's battles that you can enter into. 
There are battle tokens, level one to three, and there's treasures, level one to three as well. And we'll take a look at those cards in a minute. But generally what you're doing here is you're moving and based on how, your movement and how many actions you have available will determine what you can do and what you can pick up. So you're gonna be moving across the tiles and gathering the appropriate bits. And mostly you're gonna be grabbing those cubes initially maybe to give you better stats before you try to open any chests or enter into battles. So first, let's take a look at treasures. You come across a treasure, you pull the token and pull the appropriate card. Then you're gonna be rolling three dice, hoping to get the right results. Now remember, you can manipulate dice in this game, so definitely keep that in mind as you're going for the different things that are on the card. So based on the number rolled, we'll determine what your reward is. So you can get an upgrade to Virtues, or you might get a downgrade to Virtues because you entered into a trap when you opened that treasure chest. Lots of interesting things there. But you can also get better speed. But one of the really neat things is artifacts. If you can get an artifact, this is gear for your character, for your head, your hands, your feet, give you advantages and bonuses in battle. So you really do want to try to get artifacts when you can. So that's really the, the substance of treasures. You're trying to get better gear or just upgrade your character in general. Now, also potentially you can open a treasure chest and nothing is there. You find a scabbard, but the sword is long gone. So a lot of fun thematic bits around doing treasures for sure. Now, a couple other tokens you, know, you might run into are offerings and quests. Quests, you just simply draw the card and when you can fulfill the quest, you get a reward. It's that simple. Lots of different quests and things to have there, but offerings are really neat. If you grab the offering token for an action, and then you spend another action to give that offering to another player, then that offering turns into an artifact, which again, like I said, gives you all kinds of really cool gear for your character. So those are definitely crucial things to pick up along the way as well. Now, when you grab a battle token, we'll grab this battle one token, draw a card, and we get the Wolf of Terror. And the first thing you're gonna look at is speed. You're gonna compare it against yours, and whoever is the highest speed is gonna go first in the battle. And again, you're gonna hear you're gonna be rolling dice. This is where your love comes into play. However many love you have will determine the dice. Maybe you have a level seven, get seven dice to roll and go after this Wolf of Terror and you're gonna be rolling against each other and so forth. So on the side of the, the enemy card, you'll see his speed, his defense, and his attack value. And it's just a roll off. You'll be rolling back and forth, engaging in battle until either you're destroyed or the enemy is destroyed. And once they are destroyed, then you collect the rewards on the other side. Lots of different things can give you rewards here. You know, you can get, again, artifacts, you can get levels of virtue, all kinds of different things. But battles are very straightforward, very simple, but thematic as well. And don't forget when you're engaged in battle to take advantage of any of the artifacts that you might have in play. And also don't forget that you can manipulate dice in this game. So those are all crucial things, especially when you're dealing with creatures in battle. Now, through the course of playing the past, you're gonna be building out the map. And once you've built out the map and leveled up your characters, then it's time to move to the present. And in the present, you're simply just going to be shuffling those prophecy cards and drawing one. And in this case, we have drawn the Crown of Evil. The Crown of Evil, you'll take the blind box, the miniature, you'll read what's on the card, and then you'll consult the future book. In the future book, we'll show you what changes need to be made to the map, what this quest entails, what all you'll need to do in order to fulfill the quest, because it is crucial to fulfill the quest because that is how you win the game. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, this game is super thematic. I really like how you level up the characters in the past and then move to the present and then the future to find out what your end goal is. And with that end goal, they even have a scoring system that you can just see how well you did overall if you wanna follow that. But really your main goal is to fulfill that quest and save the world, so to say. So I love the thematic nature and lots of fun fantasy tropes here to engage with. Just a beautiful game. And I love that they've done some interesting different things with how virtues work and so forth to balance against losing health and things like that. It really does cause you to level down, but it may save you in the long run to do so. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, 
We'll see you at the table.